Okay, hi everybody. We'll go ahead and get started. Uh, my name is Lisa Tyson and I am helping um, coordinate the, the Cultivate program. So we're really excited to have everybody join today. Um, I also have on the line here, Eddie Jordel, who has helped to put together the program. And uh, we may or may not have Enrique uh, join as well, who's been a, a huge sponsor and supporter of this. So we're really excited to be kicking off the first topic. So this is one of five topics that we'll be offering as part of this program. And today we're gonna to be focusing on personal branding. So just a couple of um, items here. Um, we should have a, hopefully a, a few more people join in. I have everybody on mute. And if you have any questions, um, feel free to put them into the chat and we'll address those as we get a, go along. Um, we're hoping to have this be an interactive session. I know last week when we had the kickoff, um, for those of you that could attend, we had a couple of questions already started about personal branding. So looking forward to a, a really interactive session today. Um, we are looking for these topics. Um, as I mentioned, there's gonna be five of them. And the topics are really invited for all of the program participants to attend. And then what we'll be looking for you guys to do after this session is to get together with your student groups or your learning pod so you can continue to build off of the content that you're going to hear today and um, continue to discuss and, and think about ways that you might want to implement or um, apply. And then um, each, again, each topic that we offer will be the, the broader group and then you guys can follow up separately with your own student group and learning pod. Okay. So um, one of our special guests today is uh, Topi Aziz. So I will have her introduce herself in just a minute. We also have um, Garrison Gibbons, who is going to be joining us today. Oh, good. There's Topi right there. Um, Garrison, I don't see on the line yet. Just wanted to make sure I'm not missing him. Okay. All right, so we'll we'll continue. We'll we'll start, um, and then hopefully he'll be joining us as well. But just um, really quickly, um, as far as my background is concerned, I've um, had a career in HR, um, primarily working in the healthcare industry and life sciences. Worked for smaller companies and bigger companies. Um, I liked the talent management space, as well as being an HR business partner. And uh, about two years ago, I decided to leave the, the corporate world, if you will, and um, go out on my own to start a company called Select Performance. I do a combination of executive coaching, and then I work with small to mid-sized companies for their specific HR needs. Um, so really enjoying um, the, the work that I'm doing. I'm really passionate about HR, and this is um, a great opportunity. I, I loved joining up with both Eddie and Enrique so that we could offer this program and help to continue to provide development opportunities and learning for the future HR professionals. So um, with that, let me turn it over to um, Toby, if you can go ahead and introduce yourself and then we can, um, we can start with that. Oh, wait a second, let me just, um, I thought I had you. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, uh-huh. Okay, um, hi everyone. So my name is Tammy Tokwe Aziz, but the easiest way to just call me is Tammy. Tammy is fine, um, or T is fine. Um, I'm currently the Global Director for People and Culture with Peg Africa. Um, I've, I have over 14 years plus um, experience within the HR field, balancing it both with consulting as well as um, in the industry. Um, and basically, my career revolves around the entire facets of HR, um, mentoring, um, coaching are things that are not new to me. I'm a certified coach, um, and um, I also um, deliver lots of mentoring, coaching, corporate programs um, for my offices and set those up. And I think this is a wonderful setup you have here and I'm hoping that I can contribute um, to the best of my knowledge what it is you want to know with regards to um, personal branding which I would share once we kick off um, with the questions regarding my experience and how personal branding has helped me to get to where I am and who I am today. Okay great thank you. 
Um, I don't see Garrison yet, so why don't we um, go ahead and, and have you start um, with some of your insights on personal branding. And the other thing, because um, personal branding, there's a lot more of it um, that you see you know, today. So if you can, maybe, um, Toby, just start off with kind of how you would, how you would define um, personal branding and kind of the scope that, that you would be um, providing some insights for us today. Okay, um, to make it as simple and as clear as possible, for me, personal branding from an individual perspective has to do with your skills, your capabilities, things that are unique to you as an individual. Not necessarily if you put your name together, put the first, your first name and last name together and design a logo and then you say that that's your personal brand or you have a jingle attached to that or you have a website. You know, that isn't my definition of a personal brand. A personal brand is what stands you out from everybody else. Why is it that come, people come to you for certain things and not to others who are your colleagues or who are your sphere. So um, whether you like it or not, everybody has a personal brand. Um, because if you go on Google right now and type your name, I'm pretty sure one information or the other will come out. Whether it's social um, media related in terms of Facebook or trips you've had or pictures, Whatever the case might be, what is important is that we all live footprints and those footprints define our personal brand in the terms of who we are and how people perceive um, us to be. So basically, what do you offer as a human being? So that's the way I see personal brand. What is unique to you as an individual? Okay, perfect. That's great. So, so tell us a little bit more about how you've used personal branding and maybe some key lessons learned. Um, so, um, one of the great things about building a personal brand, like I mentioned, is it helps to differentiate you from everybody else. I wouldn't want to use the word shaft, um, like the diamond in the rough, but the thing is that you just stand out. And this is something um, that I decided to develop from the very beginning of my career. Um, from the very first moment before I started my career, I told myself that whatever job I was going to get, if three conditions must be met, one, within a two-year period, I must either get a promotion, either get a, um, an increase in salary, or get a job title change. For me, these were like my three conditions of defining who I was going to be and be seen as. Because what those things meant to me was that it showed that I was contributing or had value to the organization. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to see myself being in an organization for two years and not having been recognized either through a promotion or through an increase or through a title change. For me, those things meant that they saw me as being a value add to the organization. And that is actually how I have mapped my career to now. For every single two years I spent in every organization, I was either recognized with a promotion, either with an increase or a job tied to change. And when you put that down on paper, because for me, that was sort of like my, would I say my vision or mission statement for my career, you also have to work towards it. So it's not enough to say, this is how I want them to see me, but it's what are you doing to ensure you're there? So for instance, um, I started off my career as a facility manager. I never for once thought I would be in the people space, facilities management. But I just realized that um, once I saw them doing projects and it was people related, I would always give contributions during management meetings. After those contributions, I would go and do some form of research and then send it to the team to say, hey, don't you guys think this would be wonderful? And for them, they loved it. They just felt like, okay, this was somebody who didn't have any technical background in this, but was going out of a way to actually gain the knowledge and even help support the team with that. And that is how they looked me into the human capital management. And that is how my career started. And it didn't stop there. So again, I don't have a background in HR. I studied political science. And I mean, in those days, uh, in the university days, we actually just pick degrees in the university just for the sake of it. So I can't even <laughs> say that right now I can actually use my political science skills. So imagine how that was. But now I needed to brush myself knowledge-wise and kinetically in terms of practices on HR. 
So every single assignment I was given, I never did 100 over 100. I always did 120 over 100. Um, and one thing that was very important to me in terms of defining my personal brand, and if you go on LinkedIn, if you see comments people leave on my post, you realize I'm not the kind of individual that would step on another person to get what I want. So that was another definition. So while I'm trying to study, while I'm trying to increase my knowledge, I'm increasing and disseminating the knowledge that I get. So that was one of the few things that started helping me build the kind of person they saw me to be. Till this very moment, um, um, I started my career in each person. I've left each person. I've left um, Philips Consulting. I've left Jumia. But I still have people from my very first place of work, my second place of work in Jumia, even till yesterday, still reaching out to me for, Tammy, what advice do you give on this? How do I do this? That is how I built my personal brand. I made myself somebody open, somebody approachable, somebody who also is willing to learn despite how experienced people think that I am. So people saw me as humble, mm -hmm. approachable, and even if it's not within my sphere, hey, I can walk up to Tammy because Tammy will probably have an advice or a resource where she can get information to help support what, I want, what it is that I want to do. So that is my personal brand. That is Tammy. Um, right now in my role, my role has nothing to do with human, um, with health, safety, and environment. But because uh, my current employer saw that, oh, I'd done something in the past with regards to health, safety, and environment, and during my interviews, I'd also shared some of these things that I've done. All of a sudden, I find myself, oh, the go-to person for health and safety. And I'm like, hey, we actually have somebody who is in charge of that. But they, they see me as this holistic person who, even if I might not know it technically, I'm willing to go learn it and then give it to them to use. So that is how um, personal branding has really helped me to where I am. Uh, most of the HR conferences I speak at, um, I've never actually asked to be in any one of them. I just find somebody reaching out to me based on what somebody else must have told them about me. I mean, and it's awesome. I mean, it feels good. And that is because I took my time to say, this is what I want to do. This is where I want to go. This is where I want to be. I had a colleague of mine um, in my past place of work um, sit me down for an hour sobbing about how she's been in the workplace for four years without a promotion, without an increase or without recognition. And when she was done, I was like, no one is a fault here except for you. I said, you never took the time to define who you are. So the organization basically doesn't know who you are. They don't see you. They don't understand you. So they are not going to recognize you in any way. You need to work on that. And that is why I never, um, I put all the onus on myself in terms of building that personal brand to say, I'm not going to fault an organization for not probably increasing or promoting me. It just means I'm not adding value. And then what next do I do to ensure I add value? That's my personal brand story. And that's what has brought me to, I mean, okay, so let me share another example. <laughs> the role I currently have right now, um, I, I initially rejected the offer and not because I wanted to, but because my past employer, which was Jumia, refused to let me go. I had two people fly from Egypt, from France, just sitting me down, coming down to Nigeria to beg me, please tell me, don't go, we'll give you this, we'll give you this, we'll give you that. Yes, there was the part that felt like, oh, guys, you need to let me go, I'm moving on. But there was a part that felt elated because mm -hmm. they actually told me that, tell me, you don't know how valuable you are. Maybe we've not been telling you enough. And they started listing those things. And that made me feel like, yes, I was contributing. Again, my personal brand. I mean, it was a struggle. So at the end of the day, I actually turned down this job. So when I turned it down, I retained with Jumia. These people came back again after a few months. Why did they come back? The CEO insisted that out of the um, 56 people he had seen after me, he still couldn't find anybody that was me. <laughs> so he kept telling the person, no, I don't want her. The person is not tame. And I'm like, but what exactly did I say? My interview with him was probably not even up to five minutes. But I made an impression. And that is what my impression was, my knowledge, my capabilities. I don't just say things for the sake of doing it. I give examples. I cite examples of how I've done it. If I haven't done it, I haven't done it. So, I mean, these are things that help to define who you are, whereby when you don't even speak, your personal brand, your personal story speaks for you. Mm -hmm. 
Sorry, that was a bit long. <laughs> oh, no, no, that, that, that's good. That, that's very helpful. And I think it's great how you called out the fact that you um, moved into HR, right? So you weren't, um, you didn't initially start your, your career in HR because um, we definitely have some, some folks that are, might be in transition or um, some people who are exploring HR or thinking about going into HR. So that's great to have those examples. Um, just want to remind everybody to, if you have any specific questions, go ahead and put them into the chat. Um, you can send them directly to me or you can put it out to everybody and, and I'll make sure that we get those um, posed uh, to the group. Um, another, another thing I would love to get your insight on, um, Toby, is, you know, we hear a lot about um, being an introvert or being an extrovert. And if you're an introvert, for example, um, this personal branding may be a little bit um, too much for you. Um, and then if you're an extrovert, you may be able to do it, you know, very quickly because you can easily, you know, express um, kind of your skills and, you know, talk about yourself and sell yourself, essentially. So can you give a little bit of insights on um, how you've seen kind of the introvert versus extrovert, extrovert work when it comes to personal branding? Okay, so uh, I'm laughing because <laughs> um, this is basically me. I wish you'd even mentioned you were going to touch on this. I would have, I would have willingly shared my Maya Briggs test with you. Okay, okay. <laughs> with my Maya Briggs test, I'm basically yeah. <laughs> almost 95% introvert. I okay. take the test every year. I take it every year. From, for the last 10 years, I've been taking it every year. It has never changed. I'm an introvert to the core. So, but people never tend to believe that I am um, because they're like, you're speaking at conferences where there are 3,000 people. You're facilita facilitating courses. I used to facilitate courses when I was managing l and um, Oh, we lost you there. I mean, you're mentoring oh, people. There, you're coaching back now. People. Okay. You're out there. I'm doing this right now. How does an introvert... Oh, Okay. How does an introvert actually do that? Like, they don't, nobody believes me. So only people very close to me know that I'm actually fully an introvert. So one of the things um, about introversy or extroversy with regards to building your personal brand is, and this one is the foundation of any I facilitate on or any single time I have to go to a conference, I tell them the first most important thing is know yourself. So a lot of people are not aware of self. They are more aware of others and how others treat them and how this is impacting on them rather than you. Who are you as an individual and how do you then relate to others based on who you are? I got to know and be more self-aware. So I knew I was an intro. I mean, the kind of introversy I'm talking about, my children, I have two girls. Um, the little one is five years old and she once told a friend of mine who was like, hey, your mom should be home right now. Why don't I take you guys home so you can keep a company? Guess what she said? She said, my mom doesn't like to be around people. She likes to be left alone. I mean, it's that bad. <laughs> my my five-year-old knows that I like to be alone. <laughs> but yet, I'm actually managing eight people and culture and HSD for 12 countries. I had over 60 stakeholders. How do you manage stakeholders by being an introvert? So like I said, most importantly is, do you know who you are? Introversy is not, um, is a strength for me. Let me put it that way. When you're an introvert, you internalize information. You internalize your environment, deep thinking. And that is why most of the time I'm thinking. And that is why if somebody comes to me with an issue, even if it's not within my sphere, the introvert in me wants to step back and say, hey, no, I must deal with this thing. I want to know how it works. That is the introvert in me. The extrovert part just means that it's easy for you to quickly relate and discuss with people. In the course of my career and course of building my personal brand, I knew that at the end of the day, I laugh about it in CNN as one of CNN super ears. And for me to be able to do that, people technically would expect me to be an extrovert because only an extrovert would be out there publicly enough to be able to build a personal brand that takes you to that level. But that's not the case. What is most important is if you know yourself, then you understand your strengths and weaknesses, and then you can adapt it. 
sharing a scenario with you, the last HRE conference I had to go speak at, um, before getting on top shivers, I had anxiety attacks. Till this very moment, before I get on any stage, I have anxiety attacks. And it's, it's, not, it's not a bad thing. It's not something I'm shy. It just lets me know that, yes, I'm still human and I still have fears. But because I know I have fears, I know that I need to conquer them. And when I got on the podium and I started speaking, because my sister went with me to the conference, and she was like, Tani, when you got on that podium, you were totally a different person. I didn't know who you were. And I said the secret to that is because I know I'm a, I prep myself and psychologically tell myself, Tammy, you have to do this because you have this vision in front of you. And for you to achieve this, you need to move out of that fear. And that's how I deal with it. But once I step down from the podium, you can see my face. My face totally changes to like, oh, what a relief and move on. But that is me. Yeah, but that is me. That is, so the introversy is my innate personality mm -hmm. but doesn't mean that because we're introverted we cannot adjust who we are for the certain situations we find ourselves in i'm going to whether introvert or not if you're going to get to a point where you have to deal with the ceo do i was dealing with board members you can't say because they're an introvert you're not going to move up that ladder so the meaning is telling yourself i know who i am but however i can adapt who i am to any situation i find myself so I do a lot of self-training. I do a lot of talking to myself. I do a lot of mantras to myself, mostly with the vision I have in front of me is this is who I want to be. This is where I'm going to. And for me to get there, I need to balance being an introvert and an extrovert, not necessarily wiping out the fact that I'm introvert, because like I said, introversy has a strength. For social, I'm not the kind of person you want to invite for a social engagement, yeah. because <laughs> if you invite me, I'll tell you, oh, I'm going to be there. <laughs> But last minute, I'm going to give an excuse and say, hey, I'm so sorry, this came up, I couldn't make it. That's the introvert to me because I really just don't know how to start a conversation. But people tell me, but tell me, this is not you. I mean, they, they sit with me, they have conversations, and that's why I keep getting shocked. Like, what exactly did I say? But again, it just means a mental shift. So I do a lot of those shifts. I mean, even for this talk today, um, I had to speak to myself to say, hey, Tammy, I mean, you accepted to do it. I mean, it's part of what you want. It's part of what will help you. So, I mean, just relax. What is most important is understanding and knowing your onions. So when you understand yourself, when you on, which is, in this case, people would believe to be my weakness, being an introvert, but I understand my strengths. My strengths being that I know my job, I know my career even more than I expect to know it. It helps me to then feel calm and feel balanced when I have to do some of these activities. So I think for me, that is just the very most, um, so at least, first of all, no, don't disregard it. This book by, um, I think it's about, introverts in a world that wouldn't keep quiet i mean it's a very interest interesting one extremely interesting because there she explains to you how powerful it is to be an introvert and because that's how i feel i feel like why don't we all just shut up like can't we all just be quiet like enough that's how we feel but the thing is there's a lot of power in being an introvert but what is most important is first know that you are an introvert and know that for you to achieve certain things, there's a part where the introversy would play a good role, and there's a part where being an extrovert would also play a good role. So that's how I have been able to balance that over time. And to this very moment, like I said, if I take the my breaks, it's still introversy. And that's why I do some of the things I do. I paint, I write poetry, and those are like my personal hobbies that I like to do alone craft soaps because I like that before. I mean, I recently won, last year, I won one of um, Game Changers, Workforce's um, HR Game Changers for 2019. And I mean, I wouldn't have been able to do that if I wasn't visible. I, I, I never knew, first of all, even that a, a word like that existed. But they reached out to me because certain individuals told them, hey, there's somebody there doing a wonderful job in that country that you need to also in my life. And that's how um, there were stories of me did submissions on me and I got the award. So important is if I can do it as an introvert, if I can be where I am as an introvert, 
that anybody can. It's just important that you know that you are an introvert and that how do I balance it? Where do I need to be an introvert on my role? And where do I need to play the extrovert? Okay, perfect. Yeah, I, I would never have guessed um, so far from what we've seen that you are an introvert. So <laughs> this, is, this is great. And congratulations on your award too. But um, I think this is a, a perfect example that um, whether you're an introvert or extrovert, you can totally um, have and create your personal brand. And so all your insights about um, that are, are very helpful. Um, so a question um, that has come up, um, when you think about, um, especially as, as people navigate through their career um, and potentially, you know, some of, some of our audience is coming right out of school, they may have some experience, they may be coming into HR, how do you change your personal brand? Um, do you have some insights there on how somebody, well, I'm also going to ask you about what are the initial steps to creating your personal brand? But um, how do you change or if you need to modify your personal brand, how do you go about that? Uh, oh, Toby, we can't hear you right now. Can you hear me? Now, yes, uh-huh. Okay. Um, so um, when you find people in a situation where they're already on a path and they want to change their personal brand in terms of maybe career paths and stuff like that. One of the things I encourage is um, having a mentor. Um, it might feel like an overflogged thing, but I mean, it's not overflogged if people are here right now on this program. So meaning that the importance cannot be um, overly weighed or overly outweighed because um, you need somebody to guide you through what they went through to change their brand because you'd always have itches. There would always be challenges. There will always be different individuals. I mean, I can, if I begin to tell you how I went through my transition, I had people that made me cry. I had people who tried to step on me. I had people who were envious of the fact that they felt like I was shining. I mean, you need somebody to let you know that when you're changing, when you're shifting, there's some things that needs to happen. There's some upskilling that needs to be done. There's some knowledge, new knowledge that needs to be gained. Remember that there are people already in this knowledge space that you were never in. So that means you need to pick up this knowledge from scratch. It's not going to be easy. Um, but how do you make it easy? How do you navigate the amount of resources out there? This is what somebody who's been through it, who has that experience would help you with. So I would advise that anybody who wants to do that should get a mentor because the mentor then can help to say, hey, I understand your situation. I mean, all the people that I've mentored in the past, I'm currently mentoring, one of the key things that have been helpful to them is the fact that I'm able to relate to every single one of their um, situations. Right now, I'm a single mom and I have two children. I have to manage them in regards to school and engagement. I still mentor and coach out there. I still go to facilitate courses. I paint. I do, I, I do a lot of things. So it's easy for me oftentimes to be able to read because somebody is coming with an issue of uh, I'm a single parent or someone is coming with an issue of um, I can't change this because I've had a difficult boss. I've had difficult bosses. So it's easy when they can speak to somebody who is able to relate to the situation they have, then that person can walk them through how to seamlessly at least reduce the challenge of transiting from one um, personal brand or career to another. Okay, good. I, I think the other thing, um, you bring up the mentor, which is a great suggestion, and just having somebody that you trust to give you objective feedback. Um, can also be helpful too. So if you don't have a particular mentor in mind, if you haven't found somebody yet, but you feel like you need to change up your, your personal brand or how you're coming across, um, find that person that's going to give you some good, honest feedback. So not just tell you what you want to hear and be open to, you know, some of the, the feedback that they may give you because they could yeah. have a different point of view that can help you adjust, mm -hmm. you know, your personal brand. So yeah. thank you. <laughs> um, what, what about, um, Toby, what about just starting out for the first time? So, so maybe, you know, you've, um, maybe we've got some folks in the audience here that 
have thought about personal branding, they hear about it, um, you know, they could have a LinkedIn profile, they could have started a resume or CV, but how do you um, really go about focusing on and, and making sure that when you're spending time on it or you're getting feedback on your personal brand that you're making the most of that? Um, so for me is basics first. Basics first meaning as simple as using something as the Ikigai. I don't know how many people are familiar with the um, Ikigai. It's like a Japanese tool. Maybe you can look it up and share it with the class. The Ikigai says, what are those things that you're passionate about that when you connect them together are either things you love, things you find fun doing, and also something that you can actually get money from and would, always, would also impact on others. So for me, is that's the start. For you to build a personal brand, um, I'm not one of those believers that just for the sake of building a brand or wanting to get money, I jump into anything. I'm not like that. I'm too focused and individual. I'm too principled about where it is that I want to go. So in that regard, I, you have, I would encourage you, first of all, map out maybe like 10 things that you're passionate about things that you love, things that you would go crazy for, things that um, you can make money from and still um, make people enjoy it and you still also enjoy the process. So like 10 things. When you pick some of those 10 things, you then want to focus on like two or three where there's a sweet spot. Like I said, if you use the Ikigai, it's very easy because you find some things that are just lost in a certain quadrant or you find some other things that you, you see are connected together. So take for example, um, HR, the, the, the brand I built for myself from the start was, which is why it was easy for me to transit from facilities to HR manager is because one, I found out that I loved people. I found out that again, I loved developing people and I found out in developing people, I could get money from developing people. And in that same way, I could impact people's growth. So even till this very moment, um, I still consult for some companies and I get paid for it and I love getting paid for it and I love doing it and they love that I'm able to make an impact on them. So I don't know if you understand. So finding a sweet spot, not just something you do, but you can't make money from and you get frustrated with, but something you do, you love, it can impact on other people. You can make money from it would be my best advice. And, and once you do that, the next thing is to say, you define a mission statement for yourself. And that's what I said. I mean, it, when I was doing it then, I didn't realize that what I was doing was defining a mission statement for myself. I just knew that I'm stepping into the career for the first time. Hey, what I want for myself is I want to ensure that within a two year period, regardless of whatever company I find myself, I must get an increase. I must get a promotion or I must get a job title change. And with that mission in mind, these are the things that I need to do to get that done. One is every year until this very moment, I commit to either taking a certification every year or I take a course every year. I must do one of that every year regardless. That's why if you go to my profile, you would see that I have various certifications and I don't just have them for the sake of having them. Again, leading to that sweet spot. I'm, do, I, I'm a certified knowledge manager, for example. I get money from being a certified knowledge manager because this is something that I can consult on for people. I'm also using it for my business as a person. I'm using it for my company um, and I get money from it and I'm happy doing it. I'm happy sharing knowledge. So these are things you have to commit to say, what are the things I'm going to do and put in place to ensure that I'm able to actually achieve this mission statement. Um, in the same vein, I also, set out goals. I mean, I do like a whiteboard session every year while I was still in Nigeria. Ghana is still new to me. I'm trying to set that up. With the whiteboard session, I always set up, we come together and then we set up goals in the eights using the wheel of life, saying these are the things you want to achieve. Some of the things I do again with regards to my personal brand is what I'm doing right now is either I speak, at least I must do two conferences, speak at two conferences in a year. I mean, stuff like that. So it might feel like, wow, she's so detailed, but that is why I am where I am today. I'm very principled and I work towards it. I, I, I work. The introvert in me probably wouldn't want to, but because I know it's something that I want, I ensure I work towards this. Um, just basically today, we have an HR platform where we share information. And some people were asking questions about, Tammy, hey, what are you doing in your company to engage employees? 
during um, this WH um, um, work from home program most people are installing and all. And I listed some things. And in the next minute, I get a personal message where I'm now being invited to come and speak on a global con on a virtual global conference just because I made that statement. So again, personal brand. If I didn't know what I knew, if I didn't put it out there and then they didn't go to check my profile, they wouldn't have been able to relate it. So again, so these are things that I feel you need to do, but basic first, what do I love? What do I love that I can get money from and would impact others, not just myself, but others. That's the sweet spot for me. Out of the same things, pick like two of them. I love, I, I love poetry. Um, but poetry for me is, is not everybody's food and butter. Not everybody understands a lot of poetry. So while I still write my poetry, it's on the side. It's not something I'm going to kill myself over. I am going to publish my book, but I won't kill myself over. I love painting. Painting, I started painting out of managing anxiety and stress. And all of a sudden, I love the people who came to my house, saw so many paintings, and they started buying it. Because when they see, they say they feel calm, they like it. So now... I'm actually setting up my online gallery. So this is something I love and other people love. It's impacting on them positively and I can make money from it. So that's aside my corporate job that I have to do. So this is what it means by finding that sweet spot and giving yourself a mission statement just to help with starting off that career path. Okay, good. Thank you. Um, maybe springboarding off of this a little bit, we have a question about how do you make employers see your personal values? So how can you incorporate... Um, like you, you gave some great examples about other things that you um, like outside of work. Like, for example, um, some of the painting you talked about, poetry. If there's other things that people have as part of their kind of core values or things that are, they're passionate about, how do you try to incorporate that into your brand? Um, so maybe you're not, maybe you don't have a specific certificate in it, but you, you know, feel very strongly about it and you've got kind of that work ethic that you know that you can succeed and you can be valuable to an employer, how do you incorporate values into your, your personal brand then? Okay, so um, I mean, I, I think I talked about this when I talked about my move from facility management to HR. Is um, The thing is, what is visible is what is visible. If it's not visible, nobody's gonna know. Um, like I mentioned, I just realized I knew there was a department somewhere where they were always traveling to one country or the other, um, doing management meetings, they were talking about projects and things they were doing with regards to people, um, measures and acquisitions and stuff like that. I just found it very, very interesting. So like I said, and that's the first step, like I said, first of all, is it something you find interesting? Is it something that you love? Um, not just for the sake of jumping into it because I want to be visible, but is it something, because at the end of the day, if you jump into it and they start assigning tasks to you and you feel weighed down and like, no, this is not what I wanted to do, then it becomes more of a liability. It has to be something you love. So I heard the project and I loved it. So I went out of my way to get information on some of those topic areas, because I mean, the beautiful thing is that I'm pretty sure that most organizations always have meetings, whether it's either town hall meetings or management meetings, you would find yourself one way or the other in the meeting. What is important is you're listening in on that meeting. You're trying to listen for something you enjoy or you like or someone has said, which might not even be in your field. And then you go do some research and offer this information to the, um, the individuals involved. Um, right now, as part of the um, work from home program, Typically, this is something that should fall to IT. But because right from time in my career, in the conferences or in the articles I post, I talk about tech fluency. And I say tech fluency as an HR person, you should be tech fluent. You should understand um, um, softwares, technology, how they relate and how they enhance your business. Right now, I'm the one managing the tax management tools. I was the one that had to get the tools. I was the one that had to demo the tools and then assign it to people. I mean, this should have been an IT job. But I got to do that because they trusted or seen visibly my use and practicality with these tools and even the IT guys themselves. So, but I couldn't have, they wouldn't have known that if I hadn't made all of that visible. So whether I'm writing an article, whether I'm in a management meeting, I voice out. Once I pick something of interest, I voice out. I don't keep quiet. So that is how I would encourage people to say, you need to be visible. Whether you're visible by writing it, 
whether and sending it to the right persons or at meetings you're vocal about oh i love the idea you guys talked about i think this would be something nice to help enhance that project um in all the organizations i'd worked nobody knew what an ats was mm -hmm. when i moved to the human capital part of hpsn they had been doing recruitment consulting for companies and they've been doing it manually and i'm like i'm pretty sure there's somewhere in the world where there's something that makes this easy and i went to research it and when i researched it i started off with smart recruiters because at that point in time it was free and when i kick started with that they love the fact that one our turnaround time reduced in terms of delivery to clients the way clients were able to see the candidates from a visual point of view i mean it was easy and they loved it and before you knew it they moved us to i mean my company was happy to move us to paid plan so again I gave myself a personal brand. The kind of so the personal brand was Tammy is the kind of person whereby if there's no information anywhere else, I can go to Tammy. She's probably going to find the information. Till this very moment, people some people can't search for things appropriately on Google, and when I do, I find the information. They're like, "How are you doing that?" I'm like, "There are certain tricks you need to learn. These are things that I learned. So I learn and then I teach people. So that's another thing. When you know something, don't keep it to yourself." When you share it with others, others are able to link it back and say, hey, Tammy was the one that actually gave me that information. Or Tammy was the one that actually put me through. So again, you're linking it to the fact that people now know, oh, Tammy is good with this. Tammy is good with that. So someone, someone is going to say, hey, I have somebody down in my team there who knows how to do that. Why don't we call her up? And that's how you begin to have some visibility to your values in terms of what is interesting to you. Okay, good, good, great advice. And I would, um, the other piece I would just add too is that, um, you know, we've heard repeatedly about knowing yourself, right, and, and being true to yourself. And so if you're in a situation where you want to share or make sure people know your value or you're trying to get your brand across, find what is going to be comfortable for you. So if it's, if it's a type of meeting where you don't feel comfortable raising your hand or, or speaking up, find alternative ways, email somebody or connect with somebody one-on-one -on -one afterwards. So there's, there's different ways to, to get your, um, you know, your value across, if you will, and things that are important to you. Okay, we have a, another question here. Um, which angle brings the best outcomes for young professionals? Say, saying I am really good about the specific field within HR or I have experience from all those different fields within HR? Um, so the idea behind which angle works is, again, in terms of what have you had more experience with? What have you had more successes with? Because I, for instance, I'm all rounded in HR, but I can still tell you that within HR, there are parts that I run to first than to others. And that's because that's my passion. So for instance, anything learning and development uh, that would probably be where I raise my hands up first before any other aspect of HR. Then maybe the next thing would be maybe recruitment because of, I mean, so um, the, about showcasing which is the right angle is about which one of them have you actually done? Whether, and the, the problem with just being a specialist is you limit yourself to growth possibilities, to a wider growth possibilities. If you limit yourself to being you come in as an LMD specialist, you move to an LMD supervisor, move to LMD manager, you move to LMD director, hardly are you going to find anybody saying they want to pick an LMD director as the chief of people, sort of, so to speak. So it depends again on what I said, which is your mission. What is it you're trying to achieve? What do you love? What do you want to do? Who do you want to be? Who you want to be defines that. So if, for instance, you want to eventually be a chief of people and you start out as an LMD analyst, you already know that before you get to that middle band, you need to spread your experience across board because you're going to meet that you're going to move laterally from L&D to maybe performance management to maybe recruitment to compensation and benefits to organizational design and stuff like that. That's because you already have that mission that at the end of the day, I want to be the chief of people. It's fine also if you do want to be a specialist and not a generalist. That way, it's also clear for you what part you should take. So for me, it's first of all, understand what it is that you want to do and become. And you can then pick which one of them will be the right angle to showcase what it is that you have to offer. Yeah, totally agree. Um, the other piece that I would just um, add to that is 
I um, did do some rotations early in my career um, to get exposure to an, ex an experience in different specialty areas in HR, but I quickly realized that talent management was the specialty that I liked. And so for the, the course of my career, I would go back and forth between being a talent management specialist and then being an HR generalist. And so um, depending on the situation I was in, if I was in an HR generalist role, I didn't just focus on my talent management specialist experience because they needed to know that I could be a generalist, you know, my customers and the people that I worked with. Um, but when I was in my talent management um, specialty area, having the broader generalist experience was helpful and something that I referred to. So my, my particular path and preference was to go back and forth because I felt um, I didn't want to get too siloed in a specialist role. And I liked having the generalist experience because I was able to stay closer to the business and, and work with different people and get different exposures. So um, totally agree with everything that, that Topi said. And I think it, um, it also just depends on, you know, where you need to specialize. So um, you can emphasize the specialty depending on how you're talking about your brand or you can emphasize more of the generalist but it, it shouldn't have to be one or the other because it, it definitely brings it's, it's part of you now your and it's your experiences yeah okay great any other um, questions okay um, one thing I also wanted to open it up to, since this is our first session, um, just seeing if there's any program questions that anybody might have. Um, hopefully everybody is starting to connect with, um, you've been active on Slack and hopefully everybody is starting to connect with your own individual student groups. Um, and, and as I mentioned at the beginning of this session, what will be um, kind of the next step is for you guys to kind of congregate virtually. Um, and talk through um, anything that you had as a takeaway from this session, especially as it relates to personal branding. Um, the other thing that you might want to start to tap into and, and utilize your student group with is to start to put together your own personal brand or run it by um, some of your, your peers now. So you can, you can use this opportunity, some new people that you're meeting and connecting with, um, start to get a feel for how do you put together your personal brand and run it by some of your new colleagues that you're meeting and working with now. So this is a, a great opportunity to take a test drive with it and, and get some feedback. And I think to, um, to add to what um, Lisa said, um, another important thing is, like I mentioned, um, a personal brand is about your capabilities and what you offer, what is unique to you. So that's one thing. Then there's now how do, what channels do I use to portray my brand? Because the brand is not about the platform or the logo, the brand is you. And that's why you find that for some organizations, they weigh the brand equity of an organization based on maybe even just the CEO or just an individual, so to speak. So it's what is unique to you. So what channels do you then portray these unique capabilities? Um, LinkedIn is one of those. Um, um, Twitter is one of those. But what is most important is not just the channels, but what you do on the channels. So how often are you writing or submitting articles or getting involved in discussions that have to do with something you love? Because that is one of the quickest way of people noticing and recognizing you. And people start this very early on. So get involved in discussions, get involved with putting out your little thoughts. If you're not comfortable right now with writing like a full article, then go join another article and make comments on them. The most important thing is have a voice because it's when you voice out that people are able to say, hey, this is how she thinks. This is a business thinking style or this is a thought process or this is how she feels and people start to recognize you and start to reach out to you for certain things that you do. Um, I mean, I even always have to cut down my coaching and mentoring sessions with people because once they hear me speak, before you know it, I get an influx of people um, who want to reach out to me for something just because I just dropped a line or stuff. But that is my personal brand. So if you want to be out there, if you want to communicate who you are, and don't be bothered about, oh, I didn't get enough likes, I didn't get enough views. What is most important is communicating that out there. Because like I mentioned, you can do that simple exercise and type your name into Google and see what comes out. Is what, what comes out, is it you being at Florida or being on the beach, 
having fun or is it articles and awards and statements and recognitions coming out that is how you start to know how the world um, or how people see you so to speak so you can define that by your output what you put out there let it be something you love let it be something that even if you're challenged on it you can easily respond um, to it so you should be comfortable um, basically with it that was just my final thoughts and takeaway and most importantly know yourself mm -hmm. so if you have to take the Maya breaks take the Maya breaks understand your personality then you need to sit down with a mentor or with a coach and tell them this is who I am um, while I love who I am because for me it's most important to love yourself is but how do I manage myself vis-a-vis -vis where it is that I want to go great great advice Oh, we have another one um, that just came in, another question. Um, from another perspective, what suggestions would you have for HR professionals working in recruitment for testing whether the candidate is genuine and really fit for the organization or just has a very well-built personal brand, but artificial and not true? Great question. Because not only <laughs> in recruiting, but um, any colleagues you're gonna come across too, right? <laughs> so how do you know if they're, if they're real or if they're fake? <laughs> So um, I think um, the, maybe this is one of the strengths of an introvert. Like I said, an introvert internalizes. And because we internalize, we are a bit more intuitive um, about certain people, certain environments. So I can pick in, in five minutes. Oftentimes when I'm with someone, I can easily identify and pick who that individual is. However, we don't all have this. So one of the things I would advise is, again, it boils down to knowing yourself first. When you know yourself, you're able to actually know others. And when you know others, you're able to actually pick um, when they're being true or when they're being untrue. But first of all, you need to know yourself because when you know yourself, you're better able to manage the conversations you have with people and get them to say things that they normally wouldn't say. Um, another thing that I wouldn't throw away lightly is reading. Right now, um, I'm reading um, The Law of Nature, Robert Greene, I think. Um, and it's basically about understanding human behavior. One of the things I have helped myself with in the past that has maybe endeared people to me is I am not judgmental of people. I don't believe anybody's good or bad. I just believe I need to understand who they are and then navigate my conversations with them. Um, but when I already go with a mindset that um, this person doesn't look good, doesn't sound good, probably is faking it, uh, already I infuse some form of bias into that conversation. So I just go in with trying to understand why the person thinks the way they're thinking. I mean, it, it, it seems like a very complicated process. It's not something anybody's born with. We learn through it. In my organization, for instance, we do culture interviews. How we do culture interviews is we have our values, we have our company values, and we try to ask questions around those values. And when we ask questions, it's not about you defining what those values are, it's about giving us examples of how you actually display those values. And to be honest with you, if you're very observant, you can actually tell if somebody is feeding. And that is again by understanding human behavior, certain gestures, certain eye movements, certain, um, that's why I don't like to do just voice interviews, even if it's, a video interview I like to do it because you're able to read certain things it could be a twitch of an eye it could be the way the person suddenly adjusts or moves his eye and you can tell where the person has misstepped so we do culture interviews to do that and um, another thing we do is also run personality tests yes they say that some people might be the test but some people actually also confirm some of these companies confirm mm -hmm. that you it's, it's quite difficult 100% to beat the test. So meaning you still get something um, out of this test. So we do tests, we do, um, another thing we do to help determine if somebody is feeding, which is wonderful, at least in the two companies that I initiated it for, is when it's like the last stage of an interview, we invite you over to the organization. You're not expecting it, but you're going to be meeting with certain stakeholders who on the spot will throw problems at you, which you claimed you had solved during your period where you had previous interviews. So right there and there, you're like, um, uh, I mean, they give you actual live real scenarios of problems they're facing in the company. And like, okay, since you're taking up this role, how would you handle it? On the spot there, you can tell if the person is feeling 
or not because you've thrown the person in an actual scenario and the person needs to deal with it and not necessarily because you're looking for a right and wrong answer but you're thinking about the thought process and the behaviors the attitude towards such situations i'm not expecting the person to know it fully but i'm expecting to see how do they react to it what's the behavior towards it and what's your thinking process towards it so i think these are some of the ways you can use to actually test they're not 100 percent foolproof and that's why you find a lot of organizations doing a lot of things together because what is most important for organizations today is character character is king so beyond technical skills, we would always look out for culture fit first than the technical one. Because if you have a good attitude, that means you're easily trainable, you're easily lovable and would pick things faster than somebody who comes in very cocky because technically he knows everything but would disrupt your culture in the end. So culture fit interviews in relation to your values, having like real problem situations where they come into the organization, how they even react to people when they come to your office is a telltale sign how they smile is it tight-lipped are they uncomfortable those are little things that you read and then watch out for i hope that that helps <laughs> yeah great great advice especially the more polished somebody is dig a little deeper with the experiences and examples right sure. <laughs> okay um we have one last question here um any recommendations about um personal personality tests that you've used that you have been happy with the accuracy um, with regards to that, that would be um, DISC. Uh, DISC is a wonderful one um, to use. Why I like DISC is because it not only shows you your personality um, when you are yourself at home, it shows you what your personality is when you're under pressure and shows you what your personality is when you're at work. So it gives different instances of how you would bear when you're under pressure or how you would fare. So for instance, my disc tells me that I'm a high C, um, C, um, C, um, CS. But when I'm under pressure, I'm a CD. D meaning the domineering part of me comes out and that's because the dominant person wants to drive for results. So at this point in time, I'm under pressure. So what I want to do is we need to get it done. We need to get it done. But if it's on the normal day, okay, I want to take my time dotting my eyes, dotting my teeth, so I'm a CS. So um, DISC is really very wonderful. Um, Maya Briggs, a lot of people seem to come back with Maya Briggs working for them. Why I like Maya Briggs is from the fun aspect of it and the fact that it also throws a lot of light into um, your communication style with junior people, meet with your peers and then with your bosses. It shows what kind of career. I mean, these are things I wish we had earlier before starting out in a career because it helps to map you to the right role, so to speak. So from a, it's very broad, it's very wide. I love it just to do on the side. But if you want to fully go full professional, um, a disc, I would advise um, disc. Okay, great. Um, okay, last question. We have one more to come in. How can we manage personal brand extroverted that might conflict with the organization brand conservative? So um, again, is there has to be a balance. Um, what I'm doing right now, um, my organization is a conservative organization. What I'm doing right now is an extroverted um, extroverted exercise, but how does it balance out? It balance out in the fact that whatever, whatever I'm sharing here is something similar that I actually do for my organization. So I run what I call, like how you have um, webcasts, I run what I call pegcasts in the organization. So just to do like group mentoring, like a community where the leaders in the organization are talking and coming to do like interview panels and sharing experiences. And then also in a way to, by doing this, I'm also displaying and showcasing the brand of my organization because I'm also representing my organization. When I introduced myself, I didn't introduce myself as just Tammy as is. I introduced myself as Tammy as is people director for PEG Africa. So once when you think of me, you would also think of my organization and how wonderful you think my organization is to have somebody like me. So in that vein, it also pays off for the organization. So when you're doing extroverted things, just ensure that there is no conflict. Let me put it that way. There's a balance. Um, because for me, is as long as it's an avenue to showcase my organization, to showcase the kind of individuals my organization has, because imagine if I tell you all the things we're doing in my organization that's helped to support mentoring, and like, wow, that's a nice organization. I would love to work there. Again, brand equity for my organization. So it's, first of all, ensuring there's no conflict. I 
that's the most important thing. And you can tell that by what is the outcome of what I'm going to do? Is it going to impact on my organization negatively? If it doesn't impact on the organization negatively, I think it's fine. Because at the end of the day, one of the beautiful things that organizations are understanding these days is that they're trying to incorporate mm -hmm. what is a personal goal to you into the organization. I once had a friend who the candidates wanted to leave the organization um, because she loved to do yoga classes. But because the work was getting a bit strenuous, um, she wanted to leave the organization. And the, um, the CEO said, hey, come. We have people who are stressed in the organization. I'm happy to create a floor um, and maybe 30 minutes a week. And then I will even pay you for it by putting the um, employees through a yoga session. So that's how she was able to blend both what she loves personally into the organization that was also impacting positively on the organization because now they use that moment to drill down stress and stuff like that. I like to speak. I like to um, share my knowledge with the world. Um, PEG supports me. That's my, all the organizations I've done always supports me with. If I have to go speak at a conference, they give me banners. They give me this. But like I said, at the end of the day, they are also showcasing, I'm also showcasing their brand when I go to have the discussions or have these facilitations. So it's finding that balance, ensuring that there is no, if there is no negative output, I don't think there's anything wrong with pursuing it. I, for instance, um, when they want to do any design or when they want any paintings in the office, I'm the first person they reach out to. Painting is personal to me, but because they also want to embrace who I am in line with also work is, hey, Tammy, we want to set up a painting, except if I say I don't want to do it or I don't have the expertise for that, but I would be the go-to person um, to do that. Perfect. Yeah, and I think the key is knowing what is the organization's brand or what is the organization's culture and then how do you fit into that. So um, being an extrovert is great. It's, it's where you get your energy from. So there's definitely ways that you can figure out how can you best be yourself in those areas and still um, align with the organization culture. Okay, well, thank you, everybody. Um, we're gonna wrap up the session for today. Um, Toby, thank you so much for your time and for, for doing this solo, too. <laughs> um, yes, yeah, I appreciate, did solo. <laughs> appreciate all your insights. Um, just a reminder to everybody on the call, um, please make sure you catch up with your student group so you guys can connect further and continue the discussion on personal branding. And then next week, we will have um, our second topic, which is how to land a great HR career. So we have a couple of guests that will be joining us um, for that session as well. Okay. Thanks, everybody, Bye. for joining. Have a good day and evening. Take care.